Hello, my name is Francisco Soto. I am a master's student at the Universidad Técnica Federico Santa Maria from Chile. And I'll talk about the research I've been working on under the advice of Professor Patricio Catalan and in collaboration with Greg Wilson from Oregon State. The title of this work is Bathymetry Inversion in the Surf Zone via Simulation of Remotely Sensed Wave Breaking Energy Dissipation, which in our words is a method to estimate the initial bathymetry from remote sensing data. So as an initial provocation, what would you think if I say that it is possible to get this kind of estimate only from remote observations of the sea surface or even just from optical data? Obviously, this has been intended in previous studies, for instance, with the well-known CBATI algorithm. However, its results are not completely satisfactory inside the surf zone, where the phase speed is not well modeled with the linear dispersion relation and where the imaging mechanism changes as waves break. As a result, its estimates are biased toward deeper bathymetries in shallow water, and consequently, surf zone features such as sandbars are not well retrieved. A different approach is the one used, for example, in Beach Wizard, where optical patterns of breaking waves are used as a proxy for roller dissipation. Still, that approach lacks a physical background to estimate dissipation as the optical signal is contaminated by data arising from other phenomena such as remnant foam. In this work, we demonstrate that it is possible to retrieve good estimates of surf zone bathymetry, including sandbars and reef channels, only from remote sensing data. For this purpose, we introduce a data assimilation approach where bathymetry is treated as an uncertain model parameter and where direct dissipation estimates are used as the only data source. So if you're still with me, in the following, I'll briefly talk about our methods and then we'll jump to see some more details of the results. First, the data assimilation approach we used is an ensemble Kalman filter illustrated in the left figure. Basically, it compares what is measured to what is predicted by a model and updates bathymetry to get a closer match. This scheme treats bathymetry as the only uncertain input parameter of the model, which is statistically conditioned to dissipation measurements every time they are available, which is every one hour in our case. As a result, several of these cycles of assimilation should retrieve improved estimates of bathymetry given the information provided by the ob observations in the, and the model physics, which is the actual link we use between depth and dissipation. Obviously, with this scheme, more than one process or measured variable could be used. Here, as a proof of concept, we used roller dissipation of, as we expected it to produce improvements in the surf zone. Now, to quantify wave breaking dissipation from remote sensing data and get estimates of the one shown here at far right, we follow the, the approach of Diaz et al. 2018. Their work is based on remote estimations of roller lengths in the wave propagation di direction that are then coupled to Duncan's model for rollers in equilibrium. Here, the only free parameter is, is the weight front slope angle theta. To apply, the, to apply this formulation, and estimate a uh, roller dissipation on a wave-by-wave -wave basis, which is the major feature of, the, of, this, of their approach, um, time series of roller lengths are needed, where spurious signals, such as remnant foam, have to be isolated. To do so, we use the same instrumental setup as the Acerol 2018, which, if, which is based on optical and X-band recordings of the sea surface. As they did, we calculated the joint histograms of the measurements for each of these pair of recordings. Here, high optical intensities are indicative of remnant foam and active breaking, and high radar backscatter of steepening and broken waves. So each sensor is subjected to false alarms, but sensor fusion is sufficient to discriminate pixels where active breaking is taking place. To do so, we use thresholds that are found looking for local minimum or maximum curvature in the marginal histograms. With this information, we obtain time series of breaking masks that are used to estimate the roller length in the wave propagation direction, which, as I said, is the actual variable of interest to estimate from remote sensing data. Finally, we time average the instantaneous roller dissipation fields over the length of each uh, recording and obtain integrated fields as the one shown here. Yet, it is important to mention that such a method is, is, is not dependent on this specific sensor fusion. What is needed is a method to capture the, uh, the roller geometry in, and to isolate uh, spurious signals. 
In that sense, uh, another uh, remote sen sensing method to, could be applied to estimate these uh, rubber lengths. Data we used was collected at the US Army Field Research Facility during the Search on Optics experiment in September 2010. This consists of optical and x band signals measured with Argus cameras and a marine radar. Here we considered uh, six synchronous and collocated 17 minutes length records taken at the start of each hour between 11 a.m. and 16 p.m. during the 10th of September. Now, specifically to initialize the, the data simulation system, uh, the initial bathymetric ensemble was modeled as an equilibrium beach profile to which we added perturbations sampled from a Gaussian distribution with the shown length scales. These length scales are in agreement with the ones used by Wilson et al. 2014, on whose work this method is largely based. Finally, the model used to simulate incident waves is run with default parameters and forced with the in situ, measure, in situ measurements from the 8M array. The only sync term considered is a depth induced wave breaking following Batches and Janssen, and we included. Uh, tidal elevations are spatially constant offsets in the still water level. Further, further these uh, wave spectral predictions are passed to a roller evolution model to, be co to compute roller dissipation to be consistent with what is, what is observed with remote sensing data. Uh, these are the offshore wave conditions observed during the experiment, uh, where the considered time period is marked with vertical lines. During that period, the significant wave height was uh, slightly less than a meter. The peak period was around five seconds and wave spectra was some co somehow complex. It consisted of a northerly short wing waves and a less energetic swell from the south. And now the results. Here is the in situ surveyed bathymetry from, from three days before of our inversion experiment. And here from four days after. Also, uh, figure A shows the initial alongshore uniform equilibrium profile, which obviously includes very little information about the real state of the beach. And figure B shows the final estimate after data assimilation. First, it stands out the ability of the system to retreat the subaquatic orientation of the beach in the form of a near shorter rust that was initially absent. But most notably, it Correctly, correctly estimates the position and amplitude of the sandbar and its interruption by a rip, rip channel where Haller et al. 2014 observed rip currents during low tide. Outside the surf zone, the result is less accurate and is followed by an increase in uncertainty as is indicated by the color bar transparency. And also where Y is less than 600 meters, the result is less satisfactory. Uh, where the FRF peer pilings induce scour and presumably other physical phenomena that we are not considering in the forward model. And here results are further illustrated by these individual cross short transepts. In this figure, blue lines are the initial estimate, the red, li red lines are the, is the final estimate, and uh, green and black lines are the in situ surveys from before and after. This uh, proves the capability of the system to retrieve good estimates of surf zone depths, as the final estimate is in good agreement with in situ data, particularly with the surveyed sandbar uh, from three days before, which is the green line. However, there's a prominent mismatch at the secondary terrace around 300 meters offshore. To understand this region of flow skill, we analyzed the royal dissipation estimates shown here. Figure A shows the model prediction before data assimilation. Figure B um, is what we got uh, after the penultimate uh, assimilation cycle, and C what is estimated from remote measurements of the, for the same model time. If we focus on the seaward boundary of, of remote data, we can see that initially the model predicts a little dissipation there, and that observations are also near zero or zero in that region. Thus, the system doesn't need to update bathymetry for the model to predict zero dissipation in that region. And this is an actual limitation of our approach, which is that um, inverted depths are not uniquely defined where observed dissipation is zero. But in that, re in that region, uh, namely outside the surf zone, 
Another method could be easily coupled uh, to get a, a full nearshore estimate. With this in mind, uh, here I show you a further comparison of certain estimated depths against the in situ surveys. Um, it can be seen that certain depths are show little bias, uh, which was which is around 10 centimeters deep in both cases. Also, figure B shows the root mean square error evolution versus time. This reflects that much of the correction was done during the first assimilation cycles, showing that for operational purposes, this approach should be able to work on the rapidly changing bathymetry and that it could recover fast after periods of blackout or missed data. Finally, I would like to show you part of the sensitivity analysis we, as analysis we have conducted. Here, we tested the influence of the wave front, slope, wave front slope angle, which is the only free physical parameter of this method methodology. As expected, when this value is higher, um, relative dissipation estimates are higher, and as a result, inverted uh, bathymetry is shallower. Yet, the actual value of the, of the roller inclination angle is an open question uh, that is out of the scope of this work. Which results I showed you before were computed with uh, 24 degrees, which was selected as a balance between these two extremes and was not further calibrated by any means, mostly due to other uh, neglected uh, method related causes. For instance, uh, uh, misreporting of breaking waves, uh, the assumed roller mass density, and violation of the spilling breaker assumption. Uh, now, before the end, uh, a final comment is needed regarding the setup of this inversion system. Here, we have assumed that model errors are only due to errors in bathymetry. This is a simplifying assumption, but it is supported on previous studies that have already proved it. Also, we've used in situ measurements as wave uh, spectral boundary conditions. At other sites, however, this would be acquired from larger scale ocean forecasts or from other remote sensing technique, which would likely include, include error. In that sense, the further research is needed to know how accurate the weight forcing has to be uh, to get accurate uh, bathymetric estimates with this approach. Uh, finally, I would like to acknowledge the Chilean Agency of Research and Development, former CONICID, for their financial, financial support during my graduate studies. And this is it by now. We hope to hear your comments and questions.